God bless you. Thank you for joining us. I'm Minister Billy Burton and welcome to our new teaching series called Understanding the Tithe. For a long time now, there has been a need and a demand for this type of teaching. And it is my humble prayer that what you get out of these lessons will be the word from the Lord that you've been asking and praying for that feeds your spirit, frees your soul, and brings you into maturity concerning the will of God and the tithe. This series is brought to you by Inspirational Minutes Ministries International, Healthy Java Talk, and those of you who faithfully support our ministry work with your contributions and your prayers. We have every intention of reaching you right where you are, and we ask that you share our lessons so that they can help as many people as possible. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Facebook where you can listen to and read these lessons at a time that's best for you. Our Facebook link is conveniently posted below. Our background music, Tucked in Bed, is composed and performed by J. Mann at www.ourmusicbox.com. First, let's pray. And then we'll get right into this lesson of understanding the tithe. Heavenly Father, as we come before you, preparing for our minds to continue to be renewed, I ask that you touch all of us, I who am teaching and those who you send to listen, that there would be attentiveness with the heart and the mind and the spirit, a willingness to receive something new, something that we haven't known or heard before, something that will help us to be closer to you and the ways that you want things done. We thank you, Lord, for what you're providing through your word, through your scriptures, and how you're teaching us how we can yet get closer and back to the way that things were in the very beginning. We ask and pray for your continued blessings, your anointing on our lives, and your anointing on your word and the things that you are doing within your word so that we can benefit from it for your glory and the building of your kingdom. In the name of Jesus the Christ, amen. When God created the world and everything in it, he created it with laws, rules, and principles by which things would be governed, and man had no say-so in it. God then made man and blessed him, giving him authority and dominion over the place that he had created for him. And this wasn't limited to a small section of the earth that we call the Garden of Eden. God's intent was for man to live forever, have all of his needs met, even the needs that man doesn't know about, and to fellowship daily with God. God's plan has never changed. As we prepare to go forward in this series, let's pause, write down, and read the scriptures that we'll use to support this lesson. As we humble ourselves and admit that we do sometimes see things in an immediate short-term way. We have grown to disrespect the tithe, not realizing that the benefits of the tithe have always been like an assurance policy, which in times of lack and doubt just like an insurance policy, the tithe is the first thing to be cut out. Have you ever said, if only I had known then what I know now? If you haven't listened to and read lessons one through five, please make sure that you do. Hopefully you have pencil and paper ready so that you can take notes 
And just a reminder that eating or watching TV right now would break your focus from what God wants to reveal to you. Here are your scriptures for this episode. Genesis chapter 14 verses 14 through 23. Psalms 103, 2 through 7. Matthew chapter 23, verse 23. And Luke chapter 19, verse 10. Let's repeat those. Genesis 14, 14 through 23. Psalms 103, 2 through 7. Matthews 23 and 23. And Luke 19 and 10. In our previous lesson, part 5 of this series, we mentioned the use and function of this godly ordinance and law that is known as the tithe. It is from that context that we open this page and travel further into our understanding of what God wants for us and how we can have and enjoy these benefits. God himself uses his word in more than one context. We have laid on the table the ten things that are available through the tithe, and we've made it clear that even though the tithe is in the Bible, it is not a Bible thing. Meaning that the attributes, principles, laws, and spirit of this precept and concept of God are not stuck between the pages of our biblical, religious, short-sighted, dogmatic minds. It's only recorded in the Bible to begin with because it is something whose benefits God supplied in the earth that he wants us to know about and have. All too often you don't even know what you had until it's gone. This is part six of Understanding the Tithe. Our lesson is entitled That Which Was Lost. In order to get a clearer picture of what we're actually dealing with, we need to go back in time. You may think that I'm beginning our journey at the Patriarchal Dispensation of Promise, where we would find Abram, also known to us later as Abraham or Ibrahim, but you would be mistaken. We are time traveling way back, back to the days of creation, the Genesis, before there was a curse in effect. We open our eyes in the Edenic times, the dispensation of innocence. We have traveled back in time, giving equal respect to both Kronos and Kairos to arrive at a place that we call in the beginning. There was no account of years, months, weeks, or days. God's grace caused everything in the Garden of Eden to flourish. The tithe wasn't necessary until Adam sinned. God already protected and covered everything, while at the same time, mankind had authority and dominion. Because of sin, God now has to be invited into our situation, and the tithe is one of the ways that we invite God back into his proper position as our provider. In the beginning, there was the innocence of man. God's government ruled and reigned, but after Adam fell from grace, mankind moved into the dispensation of conscience, 
which ultimately destroyed everyone but Noah and his family, man was aware. We then moved into human government. Sin had broken communion with God. The ten things spoken about in part five of this series were all provided in the garden. Adam's disobedience towards God caused man to forfeit God's grace and unite with Satan. This ushered God out of the position of covering and provision. Man was told not to eat of the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, but he did it anyway. The knowledge of good and evil is man's opinion based on man leaning to his own understanding. But correct information and knowledge gives you the opportunity to be prepared. God had already warned Adam. Now God placed those lost benefits within a system that allows us the opportunity to get them back. Please read Psalms 103, 2 through 7. Forget not his benefits. The tithe is not something that you have to do. It's something that you get to do. The tithe is the name that God gave the system that would bring us back into position of some of those things that were lost because of the disobedience and fall of Adam from grace. The tithing system gives God permission and invites him into earthly matters concerning your life and well-being. Tithing gives God the opportunity and the joy of blessing you with those ten things that were lost in the garden. When you refuse to tithe, you actually rob God of the permission and the opportunity to restore and provide as he once did long ago. Will a man rob God? God didn't say that man had robbed him of tithes, which would mean that what you took was limited to money, livestock, or grain. He said, yet you have robbed me in tithes and offerings, meaning you have kept me out of my rightful place through these things. You'll notice that God used the word robbed. This is a bold, violent, face-to-face -face crime, unlike the words theft, stolen, or burglary, which are all sneaky behind-the-back violations. Please reference Malachi 3 and 8. For those who are stuck believing that because God is talking to the Levites, that this only applies to the Levites, please read all of Malachi 3 and 7. God said, Even from the days of your fathers ye have gone away from mine ordinances. This means that walking away from me didn't start with you. It started with your ancestors. The word fathers means ancestors. This tells us that the problem started long before the people that he is actually talking to. And there is another thing that we should take note of. Their forefathers or ancestors weren't all Levites. They couldn't have been. Levites were of the tribe of Levi. And there have been ancestors long before Levi ever existed. You have a key within reach. Why not learn how to use it? Tithing is a supernaturally backed dual provision system. It's both spiritual and natural. Tithing releases a cycle and a flow. And as long as you keep the cycle going, everything else in the system will flow. 
Be very careful not to mock God. If you are not going to tithe, just don't tithe. But by all means, don't make fun of it. Making fun or making light of anything that God said is an act of planting a seed in the spirit realm. And whatever you sow, you will reap. Galatians 6 and 7 Tithing was before the dispensation of the law. It's a spiritual principle. The tithe is not an amount of your choice. It's 10% of your gross income. Some would argue that tithing isn't for the New Testament church or for God's people today. But I ask you, does the tenth no longer belong to God? Did God or Jesus say, if you bring the tithe and follow my principles, I will no longer honor the function of my seed, so don't bother to bring it. Before we get to Moses, let's look in on a season with Father Abraham. Did God provide all ten things at once for Abraham, or did he do it one by one? or two by two, as was needed. In Genesis 14, 16 through 23, Father Abraham, who walked the earth during the time of the dispensation of promise, had recovered everything that was taken in an enemy attack on his nephew Lot. You know the story. Upon returning home, Abram, met and gave tithes to Melchizedek, king of Israel and priest of God. He represents Jesus. You also read here that the king of Sodom, who represents Satan, tried cunningly to get Abraham to keep the tithe for himself, but he didn't. The time between the life of Father Abraham, which came first, and Moses was about 500 to 600 years. This is important for you to know because it shows Satan again trying to abort the tithe blessings and benefits to Abram. And it shows that the tithe happened 500 to 600 years before the law. You would have to add up the lifespan of Isaac having Jacob Jacob arriving in Egypt, the years of Egyptian captivity, and Moses being called to lead Israel out of Egypt to reach this conclusion. The point is that Father Abraham gave tithes five to six hundred years before the law. Abraham didn't just own livestock, he owned gold and silver which is money, he gave tithes of all. As for the law, in the beginning of the second year of the exodus from Egypt, Moses established the tithing system ordained by God. Tithing was a part of the Mosaic laws, which only shows that God knew about the tithes before Moses. So God shared it with Moses as he did with Abraham. But tithing doesn't end with the Old Testament. In Matthew 5 and 17, Jesus states that he didn't come to destroy the law, but to fulfill it. If tithing is to be done, it is to be a joyful offering in obedience to God. The only reason that most people feel comfortable about voicing their opinion on the tithe is because just about everybody else in the church does it. So it seems normal. For a time, Israel was supposed to tithe to God through the Levites to receive the benefits. But they stopped, and so did the Levites. The benefits of the tithe are kind of like an assurance policy. They're when you need it, 
but hardly ever spoken of. The Levites were told about the tithe, but that doesn't mean that they were the only ones who could use it. If you're going to live within the blessing benefits of the tithe, you're going to have to think bigger than that. Are you eating from the tree of the knowledge of your own way of thinking? Should the spirit of the tithe and its function and use be abandoned? What about its practical application and benefits towards man? Did people stop tithing after the death of Jesus? And should his death bring about the removal of the written structure of the tithe? I think not. Remember, the tithe is the name of the system created by God that when used invites God into our earthly affairs and it houses the blessings and benefits that were a major part of that which was lost. In this series we'll continue to pray the prayer of salvation with each episode. If you would like to make Jesus Christ your Lord, Savior, and King, repeat after me. Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for your word. It has touched my heart, my spirit, and my soul. I surrender to you, confessing with my own mouth, according to your word in Romans 10, 8 through 15, that Jesus the Christ is the Son of the one and only living God. The renewing of my mind has begun, Lord, and I understand that I can only receive salvation by grace through faith, according to your word in Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. I thank you for your grace. I thank you for your faith. I thank you for salvation. I thank you for changing and entering my life, making me a new creation. In the name of Jesus the Christ, and it is so. Amen. If you've been paying attention, I'm sure that you've heard some of the arguments and myths about tithes and money get addressed with scripture. If you would like to donate and support our ministry and work, please send your contributions through our PayPal link posted below. All gifts are greatly appreciated, and there is no gift too small to matter. We're not asking that you donate to receive this teaching series. You're already receiving that for free. What we do ask is that you consider our honor system. If our teachings have helped you in any way, or if you'd like to support our upcoming book series, called When Tithes and Offerings Won't Pay the Bills, please give through our PayPal account at Healthy Java Talk. The link is listed below. We welcome your gift of any amount. Make sure to watch for the release of my book series, When Tithes and Offerings Won't Pay the Bills. Remember to follow us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you can receive notices when we post new lessons. Come back and join us here again next time, God willing, for another lesson of Understanding the Tithe. Our background music, You On My Mind, was composed and performed by Jay Mann at www.ourmusicbox.com. God bless you.